All right, we've been on our 12 steps for Christians. We call it a journey to wholeness, and uh, we've been doing expository type teachings, which expository means you dissect it, you break it down, you dot the I's, you cross the T's, and you beat it slap to death. <laughs> That's what I love about overcomers is that we can go to a whole new level when it comes to dealing with our higher power. And so anyway, I think we'll finish up step two tonight if y'all behave. And we've been on uh, step number two. Step number two is about the first step towards working a spiritual program. I mean, you know, even in AA, they tell you that it, you have to work a spiritual program. You can't just attend, you have to work a spiritual type program. So there's really four aspects to this. They call step two the step of hope. It's where, it's where basically God initiates, He begins to move on our heart. I mean, God is the initiator uh, to a spiritual program. We would not be here tonight looking for God unless God had already found us. We're saved by faith through grace and that not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. We're, you know, uh, the whole spiritual life is, is, is based on God drawing us to Him and He works on the heart. We begin to stir and he begins to draw us and we respond to that. So he initiates it and then uh, we respond to it. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's where God begins to, to birth something in our heart. Uh, we've been hopeless, being our own God, insane. Mm -hmm. How many ever feel like you've been on the verge of a little insanity? Insanity is doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. Wasn't that us out there? And we always do what we've always done. We always get what we already got, and that's what we did. That's what happens when we be our own God. We become insane. We become dysfunctional. We don't work the way God intended us to. So this step's about the miracle happening in our heart. It's about becoming and realizing and aware for the first time that what I've done hadn't worked. Being my own God just hadn't worked. My best thinking, uh, you know, got me in the mess that I'm in. And we finally begin to realize that, uh, you know, what we've done is it hasn't worked and that we need to do something different. There is a God. I'm not Him. And we begin for the first time to, to God begins to look on the heart and God begins, and then all of a sudden we begin to look up to a higher power. So this is a, it's a progressive process that God initiates where we, first of all, we came because God initiated, God can move our hearts, so we finally said, hey, you know, I can't do this on home, and whatever whatever reasons, God sovereignly moved on us, and we showed up at an AA meeting, or we showed up at the psych ward, or, you know, uh, or at a you know, recovery program, or, or just, you know, we ended up in jail. But either way, we, we came. That was the first step. We finally said, you know, uh, I'm going to step out out of the boat for the first time. I'm going to go to a meeting. I'm going to begin to be open-minded to the fact that there might be a higher power. And while we were there, uh, we came to. Came to means we came to our senses. We began to wake up. Our mind began to settle down and think. And, and uh, you know, our emotions began to settle down. And and we came to, we woke up, our faculties began to return. We, we went from beginning to be insane to some sanity. We started becoming functional a little bit again instead of dysfunctional. And finally we came to believe. So uh, the four aspects of this is, first of all, we came to believe in a power greater than ourselves. So we came, we came to, we began to look up, and we came to believe. Believe is our word to stay us. It means to entrust. That means we finally realize that we're not God, but just maybe there is a God that could help me. There is maybe some God out there 
And if I will maybe entrust Him and turn things over, quit doing the driving and let God do the driving, and perhaps if I surrendered and turned some of my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood Him, that perhaps He could change my life and that He could restore me back to sanity. The word restore means to return something back to its original and former state. It actually means to mend a, it actually means to reset a broken or a fractured arm. It's the word for mending a net. Uh, you know, and so God, how I many of God is all about a God of restoration? All right. Joel 2, 28 says that God is restoring what the locust has eaten away. God wants to take all of our messes and turn them into a message, doesn't He? Yep. Right. Yeah. No matter how bad of a mess you've made, God wants to make all things, God can make all things work together for good for those that love Him. So God can restore our lives. It might not quite be exactly what it was, but He can restore it, and He can even make it better. When you restore a broken bone, they say it gets, it gets stronger than what it was before. <coughs> God just doesn't want to restore us. He wants to re return us back to the four original position, but but he wants to he wants to build them. He wants to get bigger. He wants to get better. He wants to restore the finances back, our health back. He has a plan for our life, and it's a good plan. And but God is a God of restoration. He wants to restore us to sin. That's his. That's what he does. So God. So we came to believe that God could, if I would. Do my part, God would do His part. He could and He would yeah. restore us. It's not maybe or if, but it's it's a it's a promise. God will restore us. God has a game plan. Uh, we know the plans that God has for us. God uh, not plans for calamity and destruction, but to give us a future and a hope. That God has declared that, and so we believe that. So we, we came to believe that this power greater than ourselves, we begin to look up, God began to move, and we came to believe in our heart, and now we begin to, the word is pastaeus, it means to entrust. That means we say, well look, what I've done had not worked, so my driving got me DUIs, my driving got me in a ditch, it, it, it got me beat up, it got me in the psych ward, it got me in prison, and you know, did all this stuff, so hey, uh, let's see what you got. I'm open to this, I don't quite believe in this, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, thing, but now I'm open for the first time to the, the, the fact that there is a great, a power greater than myself, a power that is greater than me that possibly could do for me what I couldn't do for myself, and now I'm saying, bring it on, let's see what you got. You're open-minded to a spiritual program. It's the first step, and it's where the miracle begins to happen. So we begin to entrust. It's a verb. It's an action word. It refers to not just having faith, because faith has been birthed, and as we respond to that faith, then we begin to trust in, and the word is, it means to entrust, it means to trust in, rely upon, adhere to, cling to, have confidence, and be fully assured in a certain object of our faith. So that's what we're going to talk to about tonight. Uh, the fact that, uh, so we want to talk tonight, we want to, we want to talk about this power, this power greater than ourselves. Okay, we want to take it to a new level, not just a power greater than ourselves or God of our understanding, but we want to take it to where we begin to identify now the object of our faith. Because, because you, the object of your faith has to be the correct object. That's right. The power greater than yourself has to be the right power. You can put the plug in the jug and still go to hell, can't you? All right. So, you know, tonight we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about identifying. Who is this higher power? Who is this? Who is this power? You know, what is this Holy Spirit God? What is this Jesus? What is this higher power? What is this God of our understanding? What, who, what is this all about? How does it work? What are the roles? What, what does it play in our? Why, why do we even need it? We're going to identify and talk about the, the, the about the importance of relying. So we're going to identify and then we're going to learn how to rely on that higher power who will do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Isn't it great? That was the problem before, is we couldn't do it, could we? We tried and tried and tried to quit drinking. We tried just drinking wine. We tried just smoking reefer. We tried just one bump, you know, and one rock. And we tried just, you know, 
looking at pornography a little bit and, and having sex a few times, and you know, it just led to insanity. It led to a, a life of unmanageability, being our own God. So we finally came to believe this power could restore us. So tonight we're going to talk about the object of our faith. What is this power? Amen? Amen. Amen. So turn with me now to Romans chapter 10. 8 through 11. We got, we got that right. Chapter 10. Verse 8 through 11. Starting in verse 8, it says, But what does it say? The word is near you, it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. That's what I'm saying. The, the word of faith, which uh, that, that, that we preach, okay, is something, it's a faith that God instigated. It's a God that initiated. He sanctioned it. He began to move on us because He loved us. We weren't looking for Him. We didn't just show up. But it was a sovereign move of God that caused us to, to show up, and then we came to believe and, and did all that. So, what is, you know, what is this message? Corinthians, 1 Corinthians says, 118 says, it's not up here, I don't think, but it says the word or the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power. Circle that word power. It's the power of God. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is what? Why wouldn't he? He said, it's the good news. It's the gospel. It saved me. I was headed to hell. I was way out there, but the power of God, God moved on me. God changed me. God clobbered me on the road to Damascus. I had a Damascus road experience, and, and there was a power that came on me that did for me what I couldn't do for myself. So now I'm not ashamed of that gospel. In fact, now I want to go out and preach. This is the antidote. This is the message, the method. This is the solution. This Jesus Christ is not just some guy. I was killing everybody for believing in this Jesus Christ, but no more. Now I'm supporting him. I'm not anti-Christ, now I'm Christ. It's all about the power of God. I got it, and you need to get onto it, and it's the message, it's the good news. The good news of the gospel is Jesus Christ. The message of the cross. Verse 23 says, But we preach Christ crucified. So the message of the cross is Christ died on the cross, crucified, but resurrected with a new resurrected power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, we have that same power, and how many know we can't live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit? Amen. That same power that raised Him from the dead now is available to us through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He goes on in verse 9, 9, and He says that if, 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 if you confess, which means to say what God says with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. You're not Lord anymore. Buddha's not Lord anymore. Harry Carey or whoever that guy, he's not Lord. Buddha's not Lord. Jehovah's Witness is not. Jesus Christ is Lord. If yes. you will confess that your object of your faith is Jesus Christ is your Lord, and believe in your heart, that means... Trust in, rely, depend upon, cling to. It's more than faith. It's an action word. It means it requires something of you. So, you know, if you believe, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and then you begin to act upon that, embrace it, and now you're trusting and relying on Jesus Christ as your higher power, then it says you might be saved. It's not what it says. Is it? it says you will be. You will be. So, God... You know, people don't realize this. You know, it says if you confess that Jesus is Lord, 
and believe in your heart, then you'll be saved. But what we have to realize is that it starts here. Okay? God, God sends faith. He initiates. He loves me, cares about me. Why He chose me, I have no idea. While I was out there smoking dope, not looking for Him, rebellious, defiant, running on my own, God began to stir and move and allow things to happen that sovereignly orchestrated events that caused me to came, and then it came to that I came to believe. Okay? But it, but it started in the heart. So it says that if, if we will believe, we can faith, but we have to believe in the heart first. Okay? That means, okay, okay, I hear this Jesus Christ. Okay, I hear, okay, I got what you're saying. You told me the gospel. He died, he died. Okay. Now I choose to embrace that. Okay? I, I'm going to choose my choices now. Okay, I could believe in that doorknob over there is my higher power. Okay? I could believe in that oak tree outside there. I could believe in a cow. It doesn't like the, the Buddhas, not the Buddhas, or one of them believes in cows. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of, of powers that we can believe in, can't, can't we? Yeah. You know, Oprah always says, oh, there's many ways to, to Jesus Christ. People are saying, oh, you know, it, you know, there's many avenues, many different ways. Well, you can believe whatever you want. But my Jesus told me in John 14, 6 that Jesus said that I am the way. I am the, the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father or no one can get to heaven except through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am a, and no one can get to heaven except through me. So if you've not identified Jesus Christ as your higher power, you can go to meetings, work spiritual programs, do all these different things, win 100 people. But if you've not identified Jesus Christ, you can put the as your Lord and Savior, as your, if you've not identified Him as your higher power, you can put the plug in the jug for 23 years and work sobriety, be a dry drunk, and do all kinds of But if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you died tonight, you're going to hell. Sounds mean, but I'm telling you, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as the way, the truth and life, Jesus says you'll not get to heaven. I don't know about you, but of all things, when it's said and done, buddy, I want to be in the pearly gates. When they call the roll up yonder, I want to be there. So whatever y'all want to do, I know what I'm doing. I made my higher power Jesus, you know, when I was a little kid, but I got away from it. So it's not only just making Jesus, but it's it's uh, it's it's relying on that. It's like I can pick any one of you in this room tonight to be my higher power, but, but I've chosen this because I believe that this is the true higher power. Okay, I'm not looking to this person or this person. I'm not looking to myself. I'm not looking to anybody else. But I'm entrusting this person saying, you got the goods, you got the groceries, you got the good news. I believe you're the way, the truth, and the light. So baby, I'm, I'm clinging to you. <laughs> okay, I'm, 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 I'm adhering to you. Adhering means submit. Big word. Submit. I'm trusting in you. I'm looking to you, buddy. I need you. I'm, I'm counting on you. You dropped the ball and the game's over. I'm trusting in you. I'm relying on you. I'm depending on you. My confidence is in you. I'm fully assured that you can do for me what I can't do for myself. And so if you're saying you who you say you are, then let's see what you got. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe to you. And this is what I'm going to do. And so all my money, everything I've got, is now riding on Jesus Christ. Being my own God caused me insanity, caused me unmanageability. None of those things work, but today I've identified Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm putting my faith in Him that one day He's going to come and get me and that I'm going to die, and I know that I know that one day I'll be in paradise and I'll be with Him. And so that's what I'm trusting and that's what I'm relying. So if, if we will confess with our mouths Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Jesus Christ died on the cross, sent the Holy Spirit back. When you put your faith in what He did on the cross, it says that He'll send the Holy Spirit back to live in you, in your heart, to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And because of that, you've been justified, you've been declared in right standing, and that results in righteousness. With the heart man believes resulting in righteousness, 
The Amplified says, "With the heart man believes, adheres to, trusts in, relies on Christ, and is justified, declared in right standing, just as though he never said acceptable to God. With the mouth he confesses, he declares openly and speaks out freely his faith, and, can, and that confirms his salvation, gets him a ticket into heaven, or assures his place at the table that is reserved for you in heaven. Oh, that was good stuff, man." Yeah. Makes you want to go just drink the drug, don't it? Okay? We've been insane, man. This is the God that can restore us to sanity. But you have to identify Him. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said to them, Truly, truly, seriously, seriously, I'm not lying to you. Unless someone is born again, he will not see the kingdom of heaven. The Amplified says he cannot ever see and know and be acquainted and experience the kingdom of God. We're not saved based on our works, our inerrant rightness, righteousness. We're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. God's gift. And that's what we're going to talk about. The higher power is the gift that lives inside of you that will do for yourself what you can't do for yourself. So, so turn with me now to Ephesians 1, 18 through 19. <coughs> We're going to begin to talk about the helper now. Anybody with me tonight? Oh, yeah. 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 Isn't God good, man? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good, man. Isn't it good to know that you know that you know that if you died tonight you'd be in paradise? Paradise. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more COVID. No more sexual frustration. 32 inch waist. Big guns. Six pack. Right here. See my dog. Have a mansion laid up for me. Inheritance. And those wonderful things. Now, Ephesians 1, 8 through 19, we're going to... So let me ask you quick, real quick. Have you, have you identified your power? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it just some God that you've understood and that you're trying, you know, that the jury's still out on? No, sir. That you're thinking? Is it a God of your understanding? Is it a God, just some God of a higher power? You know? Or have you come to believe that Jesus Christ is the antidote, that He is the way? Yes, if you don't, then before you leave here tonight, let us help you, man. We can fix that just like this tonight. Perhaps you were here tonight and you don't know the Lord, you've been away, and you, you can solve that tonight. One choice, one, one step away. I got a key. I got a key. It's not my house. I got a key tonight that will get you in hell. I got a key. It will get you into paradise. You will live forever and forever and forever and forever. It's a key. And it's right here. It'll tell you all about that key and how to get in. And you won't have to sit around, do I or don't I, or you know, what's gonna happen. That's right. No, 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 no. So Ephesians 1, 18 through 19, Paul says, I pray that the eyes. How many know we got eyes in our heart? Paul says, I pray, I pray that the eyes, so uh, he's, he's talking to Christians. You know, if you've not been saved, you don't have eyes, and you don't have God's eyes in your heart, okay? But he's saying, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. The Amplified says that they would, your heart would be flooded with light. Light is truth. You know, we're in a world today that needs to know the truth, don't we? You can lie, 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 left side, right side, in the middle, every side. I mean, I don't believe nobody hardly no more. I scratch my head sometimes, you know, but one thing I do know that I do believe in, okay? He's the way, He's the truth and the life. Amen. I may be confused and perplexed about a lot of it, but there's one thing I know that I know. Okay, I'm believing in Jesus. Right. I'm clinging to Him, I'm relying to Him, I'm adhering to Him. Yeah. If He don't do it, I may end up in hell, but I tell you what, it would be better to believe in Him than end up in, in hell and not believe Him and go to hell and realize, oh, I missed it. I could have 
would be in hell forever and forever instead of in heaven forever and forever. So Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. You would get revelation and understanding about this higher power. I pray that you'll, you'll, be, get fur, you'll be flooded with light and truth and great, greater revelation and understanding about who, who is this Jesus guy? Who is this guy? Let's just find out more and more and more. How many know the gospel since the day we received it is growing? Colossians says that the gospel is growing. It means we're, means we're learning, we're growing, we're changing in character. We're, the gospel is alive. It's, it's, a, it's good news, but it's, it's progressively changing us from, from earthly things to heavenly things. From one phase of glory to another phase of glory to another. He's changing you. So he says, I pray that you will know. The eyes, so that, the eyes will be so that you will know. Know is the word is uh, gnosko. It means to experientially know that you know that you know something. We don't need to sit around perplexed and confused. We can know for sure by the eyes of our heart be enlightened what is the hope that we have of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance. I think Lance talked about this Sunday that we got a great inheritance waiting for us. Okay, my dad might, you know, might not leave, didn't leave me much, or my mom, you know, or I don't got nothing, but I got one. I got an inheritance in heaven that's that's as uh, as co-equal with Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Amen. That means one day when I get up there, God's inheritance, the Father's going to split His inheritance. Jesus gets half, and I get half. And not really just me; it's the, the bride of Christ. You know, y'all know what I'm saying? That's something to look forward to, isn't it? Yes. I'm a rich man today. So that we would know our inheritance and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. In other words, he says, I want your eyes to be enlightened so that you'll know what your calling is, what your inheritance is, and that you would also recognize and understand this surpassing greatness of the power that now lives inside of you. The surpassing greatness. The word surpassing greatness refers to a cup that you fill up to the full. And then it overflows. And then it keeps pouring, it keeps pouring, it keeps overflowing. And then it flows to where it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and it keeps overflowing, it keeps going, it keeps going. It refers to an inexhaustible, unmeasurable, exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever know to the point where it's off the scale, off, off the side. It's, it's kind of a picture of me running with a pack of people and all of a sudden this... I begin to realize this power that they don't have, and I recognize it, I know it, I understand it, and all of a sudden, uh, I've got this external force. It's kind of like an adrenaline, or a, what do they call them things, and dorf, dorphins or dopamines? Probably not that one. <laughs> but, and all of a sudden, I just leave the pack. I get ahead of them a little bit, it kicks in, I get a little ahead of further. Next thing I know, man, I've blown them out, and they're, I'm just like, looking back, what happened to them? Paul says, I want your eyes to understand this, this Jesus Christ. This great surpassing value. It's available to you. And if you get this Jesus Christ, if you get this higher power, there's a power. It's off the scale. It's immeasurable. Inexhaustible. Off the scale side. It's a power that can be made available to you. It will help you live the Christian life. If you will identify your higher power as Jesus Christ and rely on this higher power. Now let's turn to John 14, 6. We're going to talk about the Helper now, the role of the Holy Spirit. Who is He? As a byproduct of me now identifying Jesus Christ as my... The instant that I looked to the cross, the very instant that I put my faith in what Jesus... Christ in me, I was born again. That means God's seed. The word seed, John or Peter refers to it as the, the sperma of God, the very life of God. The minute I turned my eyes and accepted I got pregnant. I got just like Mary, an immaculate, what do they call that, immaculate conception? <laughs> How did you get pregnant, Mary? I don't know, this Holy Spirit thing they were talking about. You know, I'm walking around, you know, how can there's no way? Come on, you know, and you know that's what happened to me. I was a insane, being my own God, a hoodlum running from God, and God chose me, picked me. I He put faith in my heart, I responded to Him, and all of a sudden this Holy Spirit came in and began to take over, and I go, oh man, 
I kind of like this guy now. <laughs> There's this love in my heart. I want to go back now and repay the people that I ripped off. I want to start being nice to people. I want to start being a giver rather than a taker. Things begin to change. I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to smoke. I didn't want to watch porno. I didn't want to do these things. I wanted to live a godly life. Where did that come from? It's because I got pregnant. And it's been growing and growing and it produces things. That spirit and sperm of God was imputed to me and now it's producing things. It does from it. And that Holy Spirit lives inside of me. He's got a role to play. So it says in John 14, Jesus says, Hey, I'm getting ready to go to the cross. I know I've been with you guys. I'll tell you what to do, where to stand, how to do it, but I'm going to take off. But it's okay. I've got someone that I'm going to send to help you. Okay, while I'm gone, somebody that will do for you what you can't do for yourself. When you fall flat on your face or you feel like you don't have any power, any strength, any might, you don't feel like you can do it, you feel like you're about ready to give up and you got to go drug, you got to go drink, you got to throw in the towel, you got to throw the keys down. Don't stop. Hang on. You've got, you've got to help them. I'm going to send it back to you. Jesus says, if I don't go away, uh, then I can't send the helper. It's essential that I go away. If I can't go away and die, then, then I can't send the helper back. He will be, do for you what you can't do for yourself. He'll be greater than me. I mean, you know, Jesus left the disciples many times. But we've got the Holy Spirit 24-7. So he says, in verse 16, I will ask the Father and He will give you another helper. Okay, so we're going to look at the roles of this Holy Spirit. So, I mean, know it's Jesus is our higher power. It's Christ-centered recovery. But it's really the Holy Spirit. But it's also the Father living inside us, okay? That's a whole other thing there. But he says, you know, you're going to believe in the cross. You're going to go to the Father and you'll get it. And then I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and then this helper... He's going, to, he's going to take up his, his home here. And he's going to abide in you. The word abide means to, to dwell or to take up permanent residency. Uh, it means to settle down and pitch a tent. You know, we've been going here, we've been going here, but now I've decided to, to settle down and pitch a tent over Jesus Christ. I chose to make him the foundation. The wise man built his house on the rock. Yeah, that's where I'm building my house. That's where I'm pitching my tent. That's where I'm going to settle down. He's going to live inside of me. He's going to do for me what I can't do for myself. So he's going to take up permanent residence forever. I call it the, the, the higher power forever. Forever. 24-7. He says, I'll never leave you nor desert you. Once that Holy Spirit lives inside you, as far as I'm concerned, he's not an Indian giver. You can abuse the grace of God, but God's not going to... Take back the gifts and calls of God irrevocable. Amen? Yeah. So he says, I'm going to give you the helper. He's the helper. He's the spirit of truth. Need any black one? He's the spirit of truth. Okay, so he's the helper. He, he's the spirit of truth. You, you know, you sit around and you're listening to somebody preach, and you go, hmm, I don't know about all that. You know, he, the Spirit, I have the Spirit of truth, the, the truth of God. I know Jesus Christ, the truth, the good news of God is in me, so I can discern, and I can, you know, are you with me? The Spirit of truth, it's not the lie. I'm not of the Spirit of the Antichrist, I'm the Spirit of truth. So, you know, I, don't, I, can, I can know the truth in the midst of all these lies. So it says, uh, that is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides in you. He takes up permanent residence within you and, and you and, and will be in you. Amplified says the world cannot receive him, welcome him or take to its heart or experience because it does not see him, know him or recognize him as their higher power. But you know Him. You recognize Him. He lives inside you. You've identified Jesus Christ and you're relying on Him. And it's constantly living inside of you. So, the second thing that's there, so, so uh, the second thing in my writing is to empower. Mm. 
Power is our word for dunamis. Greek word is dunamis. It means might, strength, ability. It's from the word to make capable. It's a word, it's a, actually, if you trace the word, it's where we get our word dynamite. It refers not just to mighty strength and power, but a supernatural dynamite explosive power that now entered inside me. How many of the power that lives inside me is explosive? It's dynamite. It can blow things up all around me, man. Jesus, when he showed up and walked around, he blew things up everywhere, didn't he? He turned the whole world upside down. He gave the disciples the same power and they changed the whole world. They said, these disciples, these very said, these disciples, they're changing the whole world. There's an explosive power in life coming. They're healing people. They're doing, they're, they're stealing our thunder. We're the priests and here. These prostitutes, these crack addicts or alcoholics, whatever existed back then, they're, they're changing the whole world. Why is that? Because they now have the helper. John 1 8, or Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power, dunamis, when the Holy Spirit, you'll receive dynamite. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost. We're not talking just. You know, you know, yes, it includes the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you shall receive explosive dynamite, pipe, my ability, strength. You are incapable. Now I'm going to, the word means to render capable. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to enable you. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to do for you what you can't do for yourselves. The, cow, the disciples turned coward, didn't they? Okay, they ran. You know, right. you know where's Jesus on the cross next to TV? Where'd everybody go? I was teaching you guys for three years now. Where, where is everybody? Okay, they turn coward. The word means to make brave. When you get the Holy Spirit, it's going to make you brave. So when the Holy when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples now, it gave them such a dynamite, explosive power, it changed their lives so radically that, that, that they it says that you shall receive power when the Holy and you shall be my witnesses. The word is marcher. He says you were cowards before, but now you're going to be made so brave, so bold. I'm going to make you so capable. You are incapable. Now you're capable. I'm going to make you so bold and confident. Now you're going to be willing to be my witnesses and be martyred, go to the stake, be burned to death, have your head cut off, thrown in the lines, hung up on uh, you know, Herod's poles with tar and feathers and lit on fire and sawn in two. You know. And so they, then they went out and changed the world. Why? It's because of the dunamis. You know, it's dunamis. You know, so when uh, so the Amplified says that uh, I will ask the Father, He will give you another comforter. He will be a counselor, a comforter, your helper, an intercessor. You can look this up in the Amplified. He'll be your advocate. I get in trouble. I got a lawyer. I've got a strengthener when I'm when I'm weak. He'll strengthen me. He'll stand by. I mean, know God's on call. So he'll be my lawyer. He'll be on call. He'll strengthen me when I'm weak. He'll be my counselor. I don't have to pay thousands of dollars to talk to somebody on the street cop line. He'll intercede for me. Well, isn't that some cool stuff? So I always I always say it's it's uh it's kind of like when I get the Holy Spirit, you know, there's a there's a benefits package. Here's somebody locked on. But anyway, this is me, this is my flag. When I got the Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit has a role in them. He gives me the gifts that I need. You with me? Healing, prophecy, tongues, all those gifts, healings, mighty miracles, all that's available to me. <coughs> Peter says that you've been given everything from pertaining to life and God. We've been given everything we need. I've got the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've got the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I've got a, I've got in here a counselor. I've got a strengthener. I've got an advocate. I've got a teacher. I've got, I've got everything I need. It's one-stop shopping. So it's like a portable sanctuary. Now, now I've got wherever I go, 
I'm having to go through a bad neighborhood. I've got to confront somebody. I can't, I've got this sanctuary. It's like going to the refrigerator. I can get a Coke. I can get a banana. I can get fruit. I can get a you know, steak cheese or whatever. But it's like a portable sanctuary. It's inside me though when we just have to turn inwardly. Are you with me? Yeah. So, so when I'm weak, you know, I find I got this can here of Popeye spinach. I mean, you know, when uh, what was his uh, Popeye got was being beat to death by who was his name? Brutus. Brutus. Just beating, slapped to death, wasn't he? Uh-huh. <laughs> he was all love, stuck on stupid little skinny arms and nobody. That's who he. That's who Popeye was. But he had an outside source. Hang on, Brutus. He'd get beat up, laughed at. He would steal his girl. He'd go back behind a tree, moaning and crying or whatever. And he's hey, I remember I got some spinach. He had hit down, down one right, all of a sudden, and then, you know, and, then, and he went up and just started jet slapping old Brutus, didn't he? And got his girl back. That spinach did for him what he couldn't do for himself. It's kind of like Clark Kent wearing his goofy glasses and not getting Lois, right? Being a nobody in the office. So he slips out during lunch and he runs into the he runs into the phone booth, don't he? What happens in the phone booth? There's a transformation. All of a sudden, Superman! Now he's a speeding bullet, and he can fly like underdog. And you know, it's, you know, what happened in the phone booth? It's kind of like us when we go into the horrible sanctuary, the phone booth. I can become Superman. I can drink my spinach, and I can have a dynamite power just like Popeye. And that Holy Spirit takes over and does for us what we can't do for itself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, so we came to believe that the power greater than self can restore us to say, have you believed? Yes. Amen. Have you identified Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? As the big book says, if you haven't, may you find Him now. Amen. So is anybody tonight, let's close our eyes and I'll pray. I know we did this a few weeks ago, but hey, I confess tonight that Jesus Christ is my Lord. If you can say that, say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. I believe what He did 2,000 years ago for me. I believe what He did 2,000 years ago for me. I choose tonight to put my faith in Him and identify Him as my higher power. I choose my faith in Him and identify Him as my higher power. I now believe in Him. I now believe in Him. I'm trusting in Him. I'm relying on Him. I'm depending on Him. When it's all said and done, He's going to come get me. And I'm going to be in paradise. In the meantime, He sent me the Holy Spirit, the Helper, to live His life in and through me. He will do for me what I can't do for myself. I have everything pertaining to life and godliness. I've got Holy Ghost spinach. I can got the Holy Ghost phone booth. And I got everything I need to live a godly life. Amen. 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 All right, we'll see you. Amen. 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 Amen.